Welcome to the Success Engineering Your Life Blab Show. I am Ravi Tangri, and my guest this week is Michael Bash. Mike and I have worked like, oh my God, for what, 22 years right. off and on? Right. Scary. Um, my brother from another mother. He, uh, Mike was uh, so one of the founding partners of FedEx. And so he was there in those crazy, wacky days. I'm getting an echo there now, Mike, all of a sudden. I wasn't before. Yeah. Um, he, and so part of what I'd like to get into is about the power of purpose and how uh, is purpose in life and the difference that makes. And also, Mike's done a lot of studying in recent years on um, intuition. So I'd like to dive into that. And then, then if you guys have questions as well, uh, you can call in in a few minutes and, and pose them as well. So welcome, Mike. Thanks, Ravi. Are you still getting an echo? No, it seems okay now. All right, good. I don't know what what, what that was about. So I'm also here with my favorite uh, child. Hey, how What's are you? So, uh, all right, so where do you want to start? Well, Mike, this is about success engineering your life. So how do you, you know, what we want to unearth are some of the systems, the habits, the processes that really allow you to success engineer what you really want in life. And you know me, my everything I do comes from purpose. Right. And so can you can maybe start out with what you learned, whether it's FedEx or in other times about the power of purpose uh, in life and how what the difference is and how you know that it, you're on fire in that way. Well, yeah, for me, uh, my purpose is finding better ways. And so FedEx was a better way to move packages uh, expeditiously overnight in the beginning. And uh, uh, while they invented the barcode tracing system, which is a way to let people know where their package was and so forth. Now I'm working with dental offices uh, to implement a better way to run their business, the business side of their practice. So, uh, yeah, I think the idea of a mountaintop or something you can see from any angle uh, keeps your direction, your compass, so to speak, and that's your purpose. And I know before I get involved in anything these days, I say, okay, is, that, is there a better way to do this? And if there isn't, I don't get involved. But if there is, I, I jump on it. You see, I think that's very important uh, in that a lot of people think purpose is something that you do. And I don't believe it. I, I love the, the way that you express it, the building better ways. Mine is bringing forth, right? right. And, it's, and it's something simple, but that's in every part of your life, not just in work, not, but in, in, in your work, in your relationship with others, in your relationship with yourself, in your leisure, in everything, because that f finding better ways comes into everything you do, doesn't it, in life? It sure does, everything. I, and, uh, I, you know, I enjoy the discovery of something that's new. That's, that's my passion, uh, just finding a new way to do something. For example, uh, just discovered a new way to determine how engaged employees of a company are. Because okay. In my dental offices, we obviously have to, to get them engaged. Uh, what we talk about is what I call a self-running office. So they have to start with the engaged employees. And I don't know whether you've seen this, Gallup, the Gallup organization puts this out constantly, but it's how engaged employees are worldwide. They, they survey 150 different countries. And the average is about 30, 33% at the moment. And uh, that's up over the last five or 10 years from 31%. So we're not making a whole lot of progress there. So I think it goes to what you're talking about. I mean, without a sense of purpose as an employee of a company, I'm not engaged. And it's worse if I'm running a company because you have to be engaged if you're running a company. So. Uh, that's exciting to me. That it, it, it's a, it's a new way. And I had one of my dental offices, a client I've been working with, for three years. His uh, his uh, uh, team members just took the survey last uh, over the last week, finished it Monday, and they scored in the 98th percentile of engaged employees. And that's, that's pretty exciting. awesome. That's awesome. 
And and the way they got engaged is this 12 statement of the Gallup organization in their engagement survey. Things like, I know what's expected of me at work. Uh, my opinion counts here. This was a surprise, Ravi, that for me, because you and I have been in this business a long time. I have a best friend at work. For so <laughs> many years, for so many years, Management gurus have been saying, don't get in depth, you know, don't get deep relationships in the, in the workplace. Well, they say this is one of the key 12 ingredients that people enjoy the people they work with. And out of that comes friendships. Well, you spend more time there than with family, spouse, friends. If exactly. you don't have strong relationships, that's a pretty shallow life that you're living. Yeah, exactly. So I'm excited about that. And. And my dentist did have one weak point, which is another passion at the moment. I don't know if you've seen this book. It's uh, uh, mm -hmm. when it were, how helping people win at work, based on a book by uh, Gary Ken Blanchard and Gary Ridge, the CEO of uh, WD40. And the concept is don't mark my paper, help me get an A. Yeah. As a leader, how do you help people succeed? And what was interesting about the Gallup survey with the dentist is the one place he was weaker, he was in the 40th percentile, was uh, uh, someone helps me track my progress at work, my progress to grow as individuals and professionally and personally. And that's one of the workplace issues these days is that people have a need to meet higher level needs than say 30, 40 years ago when all they wanted was a paycheck. You know, they had food, shelter, clothing. Now they're at a point where their individual needs, I need to be part of something greater than myself. I need to grow on the job. I need to be able to grow personally. Well, how much of that do you think is influenced by the younger generations now? They, you know, they have zero tolerance for autocratic or bureaucratic leaders. Yeah. They want meaningful work. They want coaches. They want mentors. They're driving that. Because if you don't provide that, they're gone in a heartbeat. That's it. You got it. And so these 12 statements really drive to that point. Someone at work cares about me. Uh, it's those kinds of interpersonal relationships. And you know the model we, we uh, have developed, uh, not developed, but taken from one of my partners, Dr. Patty Lund who developed a, a, a practice where he does business by invitation only because he has a team that is so focused on delivering a sense of caring, both from a dental caring and a personal caring mm -hmm. uh, a, a perspective that, that he can do business by invitation only and do three and a half times the uh, income of an uh, uh, average dentist. Yeah, the um, just want to grab that. It's, uh, I mean, Patty's this one of Patty's books I've got just handy here, but it's I think his first one was uh, it's mobilizing customer sales for, but I think his first one was building the happiness centered business, right? Yeah, and it yeah. was interesting when I interviewed my dentist after the uh, as part of our monthly meeting on Tuesday night. I interviewed him about the uh, the survey, and we got to the happiness index, as you know. <laughs> the people in his practice and the people in our practices have a daily happiness index. And his happiness index started out about five or six, three years ago, and now it's consistently over nine, generally speaking, 9.3 to 9.5. And he correlates in his mind, the stronger the happiness index, the more income, the more customers, the more... You know, so happiness is a, a worthwhile goal. And if you pursue it, everything else falls in place. And just to, something you, you just touched on, just to let people know who, who, who are not familiar with this, what Patty did is he basically fired all of the customers that he... Not all. No, no. Yeah, but not all his customers. But oh, no, God. All the customers that he really didn't connect with. Right. Exactly. And lock the doors you can't walk in and uh, do business with him you can only do business by referral because he found that people hang out with people of similar values and if he likes you he'd probably like working with your friends exactly 
And, so uh, you're right. They rated their customers A, B, C, and D, and he fired the C's and D's, which happened to be about two thirds of his customer base. Yeah. So, but you know, you talked about intuition, and and I think mm -hmm. uh, that's an exciting. That's one of the topics for me because I think Einstein, at least this was attributed to him, uh, said it well when he said, "The intuition is a sacred gift, the thinking mind a loyal servant." Our culture has honored the servant and forgotten the gift. And I think when it comes to purpose and when it comes to those things that are important in our lives, intuition becomes an incredibly important compass, if you will, uh, a way to ask the question and get some answers. And intuition is a way to do that, and, and, and people uh, use it to different levels. For my book, I interviewed 75 different people. One was a leading venture capitalist. And when I asked him about using intuition, he said, 20 years ago, I would say 10% of my decisions were based on intuition. Mm -hmm. Currently, I'd say about 70%. And 10 years, I think mm -hmm. it's going to be 90%. And by the way, he's a partner in the uh, uh, Sacramento Kings uh, basketball team. So a very wealthy guy who's done incredibly well using intuition as, as his guiding, guiding force. Very well, important. Interesting. I remember that there was, um, back when NLP was it's so much in vogue when it first came in, there was a study done of business professionals. And what they found that effective business leaders did is that they, they didn't do it consciously, but unconsciously, they sort of made in their minds, they did like a, a thousand different what if scenarios. And then they picked the ones that felt right so they they did a whole bunch of what if scenarios in yeah. their mind and they went by what felt right to take action beautiful I, yeah it, it's it's exciting times with this technology I, I really like what you're doing here this is pretty exciting now success engineering your life means starting with purpose and then and then what's next Ravi? Well, success engineering is, you know, what are the systems, habits, and processes that the masters do that really allow them to consistently create results? And and what I've got, uh, what I've established, all, you know, all of my work. The, the, I've defined the, if you will, the second law of success engineering, your life, as you know, ensure that you are living on purpose. Because if you're not, you're just working, and that's yeah. if you're not. You're just yeah, you, you know, going back to Patty Lund, he asked such a critical question. He said, "If happiness is the goal of life, why would I do something with the most precious hours and years of my life that I didn't enjoy?" Mm -hmm. And as you know, he was on the verge of suicide, taking his own life, and in fact, did commit suicide. He just killed that part of himself that was distracted from happiness as his life's purpose. And what was so interesting is when he launched on this, what ended up to be a 10-year journey, in the beginning, you know, his only goal was happiness. If, if I've got to go broke and just live in a one-room apartment, that's it. But happiness is my goal. But what he found is he's, he pursued that that goal his purpose yeah sorry but, then you know today he's three and a half times the yeah, average dental pay works yeah. we just lost a little bit it's as amazing. he pursued the purpose your your audio went off for a sec you said as he pursued his purpose i yeah i don't know what's going on. i have yeah. intermittent signals as you know as he pursued the purpose of happiness his assumption was that he'd probably have to live mm -hmm. on less but as it turned out, he made three times more than he was making, working one third the hours. So he went from 60 hours a week to 23 hours a week, from average dental pay to dental, dental income to three and a half times the average. And that's what my dentist in, in, in San Diego that, that I just took the test, he's, he's dropped an employee, you know, one of his, he, he's now down to 16 members, down from seven. His, his team is happy. And as the result of all that is he's 
uh, his goal this year was 10% above last year from an income point of view, and he made that goal, and he dropped his overhead by another 10%, so he's up like 20, 25% on yeah. the income side. So it's exciting stuff, and it all goes to what you're saying, Ravi. It all goes to pursuing purpose and not letting go. Now, I would say my dentist's purpose is he wants a team that he enjoys mm -hmm. working with. It was that simple. His purpose is to give people great dental care, but to do that, he wanted an amiable place to work. He didn't care about managing his practice. He didn't want to do that. He simply wanted to practice dentistry, but he knew to do that, he needed a team around him that were turned on and, and, and fired right. up. And that's what As we're has. continuing to talk, if anyone's it's got questions, stuff. you can just call in and we'll bring you in on this. Now, the thing is, you know, it, it's interesting you said that. I saw somebody's. Oh, uh, they, they haven't. Oh, I didn't. I missed it if someone was calling it. But uh, uh, the thing is, it. it's interesting the way you put it, that Patty committed suicide to the part of him that uh was so stressed and doing things the way it's always been done what so many people do is they live that life and they they put aside that that part that 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 right. and this is back to the intuition that knowing that there could be something more that you know you it does, doesn't mean you've got a bad life you could have a bad life but somewhere inside you know there's something more that but you're not sure what that is and most people because they're not sure, because they've got to do what society says, they quiet that, they bury that, and they just do that what you are supposed to do. And you know, the worst part of that for me, Ravi, because I've lived this too, we, you want to be your persona, you want to be, and I think this is what you're saying, you want to be what somebody else wants you to be. And as a result, you're inauthentic. You're not real and you're not present. And and when you're not real and you're not present and you're inauthentic, then you don't build the connections, the relationships, the uh, personal connection with God, if you will. Because you, you have to get down to the core yep. of who you And that takes work. And I think a lot of people are scared to go into that dark place. Sorry, Mike, your audio is going wonky there. Um, can you just go back on what you just said about the core? We, you have frozen up. Well, let's hope that we're getting back there. Um, so what, uh, just uh, while we're just waiting for Mike's signal to come back, I'm hoping that you can hear me on this, Mike. Uh, and Anita's saying just refresh the browser and come back in. That sometimes fixes, and fixes things. Thank you, Anita. Um, the, uh, this whole thing about finding your core, our whole society is being be about volume. conforming. And the core is what makes us unique. So what what I think... A lot of people are scared to do is step into that not knowing and go through that journey. It's 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 hard. It could be scary, but that's where the real power is, and that's why we grow up and we you know we do we get our bells and whistles, we get the picket fence, we get all these things, the corner office, and yet it still feels like something's missing. And I you know the the I think a lot of us get to get to this point in life and and you know you've got all the stuff and you're saying I this is what I thought I always wanted and it still feels empty and I mean that's what I'm talking about is how do you first of all get out of the business and, and I think the busyness is an excuse to the busyness is an excuse to avoid being in that emptiness and stepping through that emptiness to find who we really are and I mean, does that make sense to you guys? That the the busyness just is a way of not um, not facing that. And what we need to do is be able to step out of that. Because you know what? With my clients, the people I've coached, I'll tell you, there's not a single one 
that is as busy as they really thought they were. They think they are, that it's got to be boom, 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 but that's because they don't have, they don't want to take the time to stop and breathe and really look inside. And, uh, and I think that something that we feel that that is our intuition kicking in saying, look, you can, there can be more. It can be more fulfilling. There's more to life than just the, the going through the, the, the steps. And I love that analogy of Patty had a choice of one or the other had to die. It was either that finding the purpose or doing what everyone did. And the, the part that he let die is the um, doing what everyone thought he should do. So, uh, folks, uh, we're not seeing Mike. We're just and we're just coming up, running out of time here. I think so. I'm just going to wrap things up here. Truly appreciate you coming in. This is happening every Friday. I'm bringing in new guests every Friday with ideas on how to success engineer your life. Uh, some of the masters that are out there. Um, at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. Atlantic, 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. And uh, just to let you know, a couple of the other things that are happening that we are uh, launching on Monday, a free uh, video course on that are going to give you some tools to the uh, – from the full success engineering your life program it's a free course but you'll get to try out some of these tools to actually apply them to your life to start to say how do i make that time to breathe how do i start to figure out what it is that's missing and then how do you start to make it happen so that'll be kicking in and also next week on periscope i'm going to be kicking off a um 30 day challenge. I really believe 2016, I have this intuition, this gut feeling, it's going to be an amazing year for so many people. And if you believe that, this is a 30 day challenge. I've got you to really crystallize and accelerate your vision. And each day, I'm going to give you a new Jedi mind trick or technique or tool to accelerate uh, what's happening with you to create what you want or to how do you get some of the blocks out of the way okay so that's uh those are both kicking off next week both free uh you'll get information on those just go to facebook.com uh, uh slash success engineering i'll keep you posted on that and i will see you next friday with my special guest wayne lee have an amazing weekend and we'll see you soon thank you so much for tuning in bye-bye